Got it. What's up, Dream Media family? This is Zach. Welcome back to another episode. Today, we're out here at Expona 2024, and I'm at the Yamaha booth. I'd like to introduce Phil. Today, we are going to be taking a deep dive into Yamaha and kind of learning a little bit about their heritage. And uh, Gene from Audioholics turned us on to Yamaha, a big fan, and I couldn't be more excited to be out here today. So, Phil, just... Yeah. Take me through the booth. Show me what you guys have and um, where the brand started and where we're at today. Yeah, okay, so Yamaha's 135 years, 1887 is when it started as a musical instrument company. But it was in uh, the mid, early, early 50s that we started uh, doing some audio. This is uh, Yamaha's second generation turntable, um, the uh, F2. The thing that's noteworthy about this, this is the world's first product with the term hi-fi used in it. In the early 50s, there was high fidelity records. They were all mono back at the time. Yeah. There's high fidelity records, but no one had put it that term to a piece of hardware. Uh, we have the Japanese uh, sales literature. We have the original Japanese sales literature. Now you Google Translate, you can translate it and see what it says. Yeah. And it's cool. That is um, so cool. So that was in 1954, and here we are in, you know, 70 years later, and we're uh, still doing hi-fi. This year, 70 years. Yeah, this wow, is Wow, congratulations. Year. So normally we'd have more demo product on this side, but we thought we've had people have so much fun coming in. Oh, I remember the CR2020, and you know, we got you know just a handful of products. The NS10Ms, which you see in every recording studio for years and years and years, and we haven't made them since 2002. And they're still being used today, and they're still expensive to buy on the used market. NS1000M speaker over there. That was a classic back in the 80s and 70s. Everyone had to have one of those at the Beryllium Dome mid-range and tweeter. A Beryllium Dome? Yeah, we developed a method to uh, deposit uh, Beryllium uh, into a dome shape. Yeah, now a lot of companies are using they do that, Beryllium, yeah. different yeah. versions of Beryllium tweeters. Uh, and then this is kind of the deal that said, we started out in the U.S. in the early 70s when we came over, and that was in the boom of hi-fi. You know, that was the golden age of hi-fi. But at the time, we were like a, just another Japanese brand. They knew us about pianos. There's some about pianos, but now we're making hi-fi gear. Um, so we came out with some really cool uh, high-end separates. We did, did a lot of technology, but they were very, very expensive. Uh, we came out with the 1000 series integrated. And then in 77, we came out with the CR2020. It's a series, 62820-2020. This is what caught fire. Uh, this is what caught fire uh, in the stores. It was a retail super success for us. And that's what got Yamaha, boom, on the map as a legit uh, contender in hi-fi. And that was... a. Uh, Kind of from this generation right here going back super to the, cool going back to the 70s i always love hearing about this stuff because it's all before my time yeah you yeah. know i got started in like boom right into home theater <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that was a decade ago <laughs> yeah yeah when i started with yamaha at least i had a few years i had five or six years before home theater started creeping, creeping. in and, and everything that took off going that way and what I, year did you start with the company uh, 84. This wow is, so this is my 40th year with the company congrats so yeah. So that's kind of a little bit about the heritage. Anything else you want to touch on there? Or oh, should well, we... we can start 1955. Ah! <laughs> no, I think that's a, a, a great yeah. reference. I just wanted to share with you guys a little bit about the company. Obviously, most of you have now heard of Yamaha. So let's talk yeah. about where Yamaha is today. Okay, so today, um, this is kind of my 10 year trip. During the 90s when hi-fi or when AVRs were going nuts and surround sound and all that, uh, the, the whole industry kind of took their eye off the, off the ball of hi-fi. You know, we were guilty of that. My competitors were guilty of, of that. And yeah, we were still putting out nice stuff, but we didn't emphasize marketed and you know, everything was AV receivers and surround sound because that's what was really booming at the time. Well, then around 2000, we decided we want to get back serious in the hi-fi because we kind of lost the edge at Yo and hi-fi. We had nice stuff, we had a good reputation, but we weren't pumping out stuff all the time. And so we made a line of products, uh, really good products that are engineered super well, and our product planner in there was part of this project, and it was engineered absolutely perfect. There's all kinds of proprietary circuitry and stuff like that. And then the, um, they took it to a reviewer, uh, an international reviewer, the guy goes, congratulations, this is absolutely perfect. 
This is the best uh, integrated amplifier I have ever looked at or ever measured. And That's so the engineer is feeling pretty good, yeah. and, then, and then the reviewer goes, but it didn't move me. So it was, it measured perfect, it was perfect on paper, but it wasn't musical. And that kind of set us back, because we thought, hey, we're a music company, we can make music. Well, that set us back. So that changed the whole trajectory of how we do hi-fi now. We have a, uh, a mantra called true sound. And it's not the specs, it's not this, it's does it, can you connect with it? And you've heard high-end products. There's high-end products that sound spectacular, but it's like you're listening to it play music at you, mm -hmm. rather than kind of get connecting with the music and being brought in. It's kind of a weird thing. It's a conceptual thing. No, you're thing. right. It's a conceptual yeah. thing. But once you experience that, and it doesn't have to be a super expensive piece of gear. It can be something that's mid-priced. Uh, that's what our goal is now, more than anything. It's not engineering gymnastics and you know we can out-engineer our competitors or something like that, which we can do if we wanted to. Yeah. But um, uh, we've got to make that connection. Because we make the quarter million dollar piano that Bob James is playing in the other room over there. It's our piano, we make it. So when we play the recording of Bob James through our electronics gear, it better sound like our two hundred and fifty thousand dollar piano, and you know we have a vested interest in that. So it's, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, some of the models um, that you guys have real quick, like currently, right now, okay. twenty twenty four. Let's just give me a run through. <laughs> I'm not familiar at all, guys, okay. with with the lineup. So I just want to kind of get uh, educated. Yeah, you know, tell me a little bit. Okay. There's one set of product that's not here, and Gene has reviewed this uh, before, so if you look at some of those, there's our 5000 series. That was our flagship series, and the fun part about the flagship series, that's what every engineer wants to get on the flagship team. Because when we, does, about every 10 years we do this, and basically there's no budget, it's unlimited no. budget, and they're not working within a price constraint. We don't know how much it's going to cost at retail until after they're done with the project. You know, the, the hardest job is making a $250 stereo receiver because yeah. that means you only have this many dollars for parts yeah. and you got to really do some crazy engineering. So this 5000 series, it's the flagship now, that's yeah. a two-channel integrator or two-channel separate? Two and what's the two, price point? Two-channel separate. It's about 45000 for the system. Okay. It's a turntable preamp, power amp, and speakers. Oh, okay. The cool thing, it's all balanced all the way through. So the, from tip to cone is balanced, everything in between. Very From the nice. tip of the stylus, it's balanced out into the preamp, XLR cables. The preamp is mirror image of book match image of each other, going into the amplifier, which is book match, and all the way out to the speaker. The that amp design, the signal never comes in contact with ground and it's never related to ground at all. It's completely floating Very nice. and balanced. So now we have no constrictions of you know, yeah, noise is a is a consideration, but this is what makes it music. We talked about that connection thing. Was that we can just kind of float through the circuitry to the speaker. Now I bring that up. That's our flagship speaker, and the reason why we give them all the engineers all these resources to develop these uh, products is they're going to develop stuff. They're going to come up with patents on things that we're going to use for the next 10 years in trickle, trickle down. down yeah. So three years ago, we come out with this line of integrated right here. Okay. So it's good, better, bad, 8,000 to um, uh, 3,400, uh, somewhere in that range. You can look online and check that out. But they're the same exact amplifier architecture that we use for the 5,000, that we developed for the 5,000 series are in this. Now, of course, there's smaller power supplies and, you know, some. You know that's eight thousand dollars versus twenty thousand for the electronics, and you know forty-five thousand for the whole system. So we did that three years ago. Just this last year, we took the entry level, which is has you know flagship roots. Yep. It's off the same tree, and we made a receiver out of it. And so that's the RN two thousand, and that's been getting lots of great reviews this last year. Gene's reviewed it uh, and measured it and stuff like that. The um, Separates are cool because you can add and do stuff. Separates cost a lot of money. Uh, a lot of people like uh, stereo. For us, stereo is what's is growing. The two two channel receivers. Is yeah. Because really people are stereo's they, coming back. They like the simplicity. They know when they turn that knob, it gets get louder. 
And if they hit that button, it goes off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, apps open or anything like that. So we took all of our music cast uh, streaming um, capability, all the streaming services, put it in there, put a USB DAC, HDMI, and when we get over to the other room, we'll take a, take a look at that. So we went from high end, now we're trickling down. Now it's still, it's not cheap. The RN2000 is a $4,000 receiver, okay. but it's a one and done. And it's yeah. something that's, it's not beyond the, the rainbow out there. What year was this one put out? Uh, uh, 2021, I think it was. Oh, cool. Yeah. So you're giving it kind of that nostalgic old school Oh look. yeah, because if you go, yeah, the knobs, these controls yeah, that's really right here cool. are the same as what we were doing Doing today. I really like that. So the 45 year old products are is where you get your style. The from. balance. <laughs> That's cool. The paddles for right here is the same thing that we were using back in the mid 70s. <laughs> That's awesome. So and you, you can see you can see where it came. You see what family all these new stuff yeah, is from. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the roots back here. I love it. So can we check out the other room? Yeah. Let's uh let's try it out. Let's yeah. See let's see there. what's going on in there. Guys, we're shooting super raw and quick, so we're gonna take a peek in here and yeah, see we, what we're working with. Clean it out the room first. And... Maybe we give you guys a demo. You want you want to sit down and give them some, give them a demo. Yeah, Phil, we'll kind of check out the speaker and do a little demo for him. Okay. And then hopefully by then. Yeah. And the rain that floods the valley Drowned in the rain that floods the valley What do you think, Zach? Need a minute to listen. Let's enjoy it. They're good looking speakers. All right, I gotta tell you what you listen to here. Yeah, all right, Phil. You got my attention now. <laughs> These are beautiful speakers. Yeah, we'll get to those. We were talking about the receiver, you know, how we yeah. took the integrated. Yeah, let's and made keep talking about this the receiver. This is it right here. This is the RN2000. So this is now the 2024 model. Uh, yeah, 2023. So this is this has been out last year. So it's been out for less than a year. So it has that really cool amplifier that we have in the flagship. Uh, we have an OLED display underneath here, which actually we can make it so it shuts off when we're um, not using it. So it just completely blacks out. Does have meters? Got to have meters if you want to be cool. <laughs> and the controls. And then it's a, but it's a, it's a modern two-channel thing. It so it's MusicCast app, so it's all app controlled. We can link it with everything else that's MusicCast in our home. MusicCast um, is like a um, your a, proprietary app for like whole house audio. Well, wireless multi-room audio. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have AirPlay too in there? Uh, yes, this is AirPlay as well. Very so, nice. Yeah, it's AirPlay. Uh, Rune has been Rune tested. Oh, nice. We got that little oh, sticker just, re just recently, so yeah. So what's this down here? Okay, that's the 1000. This is, this is the baby brother to this one. So this one doesn't have the meters, but it's uh, about two thirds the price. This is $4,000. Okay. Uh, what kind of amplification? This is a standard uh, AB amplification. Now we talked about this being floating and balanced. Yeah. Lot. Now we drop down in the standard uh, amplifier, which we're pretty good at. We've been doing those a long time too. But what we did with this model is we kept all the features that this has and dropped it down. So the only thing is you're downgrading the amplifier capability and you're losing the, the really cool the yeah. really cool meters. And then we just have a CD player. And this is a player, CD player. That CD was just player. a source. That's a CDS 1000. That's been in our lineup for a long time. And you guys, are you premiering these or? These are the latest. I mean, they're, they're stunning. Just, what, these, is that a, uh, what type of tweeter is that? That is a Yamaha proprietary tweeter. <clears throat> we make our, own, make our own drivers there. So this is the... It's like a silk dome? No, it's uh, spruce. 
believe it or not. And I was saying, let me grab a sample over here right behind you. It's obvious we didn't Pretty reverse cool. this, but we're <laughs> going to do this. Okay, this is a spruce and xylon. Xylon is the strongest um, man-made uh, fiber that exists. Oh. It's like you heard nylon, yep. rayon. There's xylon. His the so it's even more rigid it's than like stronger. a nylon. A uh, one millimeter strand can lift a metric ton. Whoa! And hold it. They use it in aerospace. They use it. Uh, it doesn't burn, so they use it for heat shields for reentry vehicles. And the problem is, it is so st tough. You don't just mold it around like you would a, a carbon fiber or a fiberglass go woofer or something like that. So we had to develop some processes to even form it. And so our 5000 series speakers, our flagships again, were made out of that. The problem is that process is really expensive. We couldn't get it down into these price points for these speakers right here, the 2000s, which these are $4,000 a piece for the 2000, $2,400 a piece for those. And we're gonna focus on that. Still not crazy. But, so we need a replacement. So what we did, we did the compromise. We made spruce paper cones, and spruce is perfect for its sonic qualities. That's why guitar tops are made out of spruce. That's why piano soundboards are made out of spruce. Mm. So these are spruce paper. And so where do you think we get our spruce from to make our woofer cones? From our piano factory and our guitar factory. So all the scrap wood that is cut up, um, we use it and make you know, grind that up and sense. pulp it. Yeah. Then we add that xylon fiber into the mix with a couple other things. Then you end up with something like that. You know, that's a finished cone there. See how rigid that is? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, for a paper cone, you wouldn't expect it to be yeah. that rigid. But it still has the, the, the sonic properties of, uh, of a spruce, of a spruce uh, cone. Really appreciate you taking us through all this. Now, and then though, it's, what's really neat about that is you asked what the tweeter was made out of because it looked a little bit different. It's yeah. made out of the same material as that. So now, the, in, in this piece over here, the woofer, the mid-range, and the tweeter are all the same exact material. So there's no sonic difference as they go up in frequency. You know, sometimes you'll see you know, a different type of tweeter in mid-range. Yeah, most of the time you do. Yeah, most of the time you yeah. do. Uh, that takes a lot of the funniness out of building speakers if you can use the same material uh, throughout the, all three drivers because the voice is going to sound the same, the, everything's going to be timbre matched throughout the whole frequency spectrum. Very cool. And then we got a bunch of other patented things and we don't want to make this a 45 minute <laughs> training session. But we, we what think. do you guys think? Drop comments <laughs> down below. Is this getting too lengthy? I don't know. I'm here to learn. Let's hear about the yeah, tell All us, right, tell us yeah. about the bat. If we get voted I mean, off, then we just, yeah, we just cut it it's, off. It's day one for us here at Yamaha. We or here at Dream Media with Yamaha. We oh, want okay. to learn. Yeah, we got. Oh, we got all these tools. Okay, let's start out with the. Uh, we'll we'll start with the cabinet first. Okay. Okay, so we're going to focus on the um, NS 800s because these just uh, these are the newest. They just started shipping okay. a little bit ago. Inside there, they have these beautiful works of art. Okay. They should be in a Smithsonian. Cardboard? Yeah, cardboard. Okay. What does this do? <laughs> <laughs> it's a cardboard and phone. $2,400. Okay, <laughs> in these speakers, and we developed this with the 5000 series, there is no batting material or damping material inside. These are empty wood boxes. Okay. What's the enclosure and, made out of? Pardon? What's the enclosure made out of? Uh, particle board is this one. MDF? MDF, yeah. Okay. But uh, let me tell you what we did and the choices that we made. Uh, at resonance, because we know the length from the top of the bottom of the cabinet. There's so many inches and you can do the math and you figure out what frequency is the resonant frequency of this cabinet. Just like when you're doing room acoustics, you know, you know yeah. how many feet. Yep. So once you start getting close to the resonance uh, level, You'll get a high, when it gets to a quarter wavelength, you'll have a high pressure on top of the cabinet and a low pressure at the bottom of the cabinet. And then at the other cycle, you'll have a high pressure at the bottom and a low at the top. So what happens is your woofer just wants to sit there and woof. It just wants to, you send electricity, it just wants to move. Once the speaker, the cabinet starts to resonate, then the cabinet starts high pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure. So now the woofer is fighting 
the resonance of the cabinet, and it just wants to make its music. Mm -hmm. So normally what we do is we shove a bunch of batting material in there, and there, it works, but there's some downfalls to that. Okay, the acoustic. You're doing great. <laughs> We're doing this now. So what this does, this is tuned to the frequency. It's kind of like an anti-tuned frequency of the cabinet. Okay. So when the cabinet starts to resonate, there's some pressure differences inside the cabinet. The high pressure up here will kind of get sucked into this tube and then equalize the low, frequ the low pressure side. So basically what it does is it sucks the high pressure and pumps up the low pressure. So you get a consistent pressure uh, in here. So it doesn't resonate. The resonance won't do anything uh, for you or for the cabinet. It won't do anything bad. Are these ported? Yes, these are ported in the back. Okay. Uh, there's actually two sets of these, one for the vertical and then one for the, the front and back. Okay. So there's no resonance in this box. That it, can't, it can't resonate because we have the, um, these devices here. And they're patented, of course. So Interesting. You, you, ask, you, you ask about those? base. We're recording right here. Oh. We're, we're trying to do it. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> um, so this is our twisted flare port. You can't really see it. Yeah, yeah, no, you can see it. You can see that there's yep. a twist in there. Check it out, guys. See that? And it's kind of like rifling on a gun. You know, it spins the bullet. What this does, <laughs> <laughs> so it's ported in the back, and what it does is it puts a little twirl in the air. In the air. The airstream okay. going out, and it keeps going out. It tends to go a little bit farther. If we just have a flat cutoff, it just goes, and then you end up with a high pressure in the back, and you get chuffing, and you get yeah. the bad sound. So that's another patented technology from Yamaha. Then we get to the tweeter. This is my the most fun part. So this what is the, is acoustic, going on the here? acoustic resonator. Okay. So the back of the tweeter needs to be protected from the woofer. And so you need to build two chambers in there or what most it's more cost effective to build a a resonator. So it's a, it's a tube of some for, sort. Sometimes it's a pyramid shaped thing. But it does resonate. There will be a frequency where it does resonate. If you see the shapes of these side tubes right here, Yamaha is the largest manufacturer of musical instruments. We make a lot of French horns and trumpets. Guess what? If this was painted brass, it would kind of look like a part of a, of a horn. So when this center chamber starts to resonate, the air stops moving. At resonance, air stops moving. And then that builds up pressure on the back of the dome of the tweeter. So what this first tube does right here is when this builds up high pressure it releases it kind of like what we were doing inside the cabinet but this is down to the tweeter level here and now and then when this one starts to resonate then this one cuts it in half and so you get a consistent back pressure on the very tweeter. interesting and that's a, just another patented device that we came from the uh, 5000 series and that's now it's all the way down into the mid-level products. Thank you for taking the time to explain that yeah. to us. Mr. Science Guy, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right, anything else that you'd like to cover? No, I think I think that's about it. Wonderful. I, we can talk prices, I guess, on these and... No, um, you already covered it. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, we're, I think we're good, guys. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying this content and finding it informative and helping you make a buying decision. There's so many options out there on the market here at Dream Media. We're like a boutique. Uh, we hand select our brands and we really like to sell stuff that we believe in. So if you're interested in learning more about Yamaha, reach out today for a free video consultation with one of our specialists or you can shop on our website. If you liked our video, give us a big thumbs up and be sure to smash that subscribe button down below for more. Till next time, this is Zach with Dream Media out here with cool. Phil from Yamaha. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Yeah. Thanks That's for watching, guys. Have a good one. Thanks, guys.